what the Falcons do, rise up and blow fourth quarter leads. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, everybody. The show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, live on sports and Falcons fans. So, uh, this is my Monday morning recap of the Falcons' performance yesterday against the New Orleans Saints, our most hated in-division rival. Uh, so, as anybody who's watching this probably knows, the Saints routed us 27-26. to The Falcons were actually winning for the vast majority of the game, all the way into the last 30 seconds of the game. And through a weird series of events in that last drive, it ended up with a very long 60-plus field goal yard, uh, sorry, 60-plus yard field goal try that could have won the game. Uh, it did get blocked, so it never had a shot, but uh, that it definitely created a lot of drama. Uh, having been there at the game, it was an incredible game to watch overall. We performed much better in a lot of different aspects than I thought we did, but then the fourth quarter happened. But let's just kind of go, uh, go through the stats here. First off, things that I kind of predicted and things I didn't predict. The things I predicted, I predicted we would probably be a pure RPO offense, which is run pass uh, option offense. So um, basically, we lined out the shotgun almost every single play. Uh, it was almost always a fake uh, to Cordell Patterson or Avery Williams. I'm not sure why we didn't see Tyler Algier out there at all. Damian Williams got hurt very early on. It was clear he was meant to be a big part of the offense, but he ended up going out with a rib injury on his first run of the day. So he didn't. We didn't actually get to see him for uh, for very much time. Um, Mariota ended up, whenever the play kind of broke down, he would take off with his legs. Uh, and what I noticed every time with him is he very rarely just continued to run straight through to get yardage. He would run, and as soon as he would see a defender, he would cut back, usually to the left, because he almost always ran out to the left, cut out to the left, would run backwards a yard or two, hoping to elude a defender, and most of the time he ended up getting tripped up and would lose yards where he could have gained an additional two to three if he just kept going forward. Now I know it's not ideal for your quarterback to take hits, but if you're going to do that, freaking do it. Just go. Now, he was not particularly effective as a passer. He did have 20, 20 pass completions on 33 attempts for 215 yards, no touchdowns, also no interceptions, though good God in the fourth quarter we should have Give him the ball away three times. That's definitely a bad thing on the Saints. Um, just he definitely participated more as a runner. He had 12 rushes for 72 yards. He did have a touchdown uh, on more or less a QB sneak. I think it was basically a fake toss back to uh, uh, Cordell Patterson, and it left uh, room right between the center and the guard for him to just go unimpeded into the end zone, more or less. So, you know, good. He got his touchdown that way. For fantasy purposes, it was a fine day. Um, but he just didn't look great. Now, again, the thing that I think was most indicative of him is in his preseason week two. He hits uh, Kyle Pitts, who was mostly quiet yesterday, but hits Kyle Pitts for a 50-yard um, pass where Kyle Pitts had the defender beat, like beat, beat, and Pitts had to slow down. So his deep ball accuracy and his deep ball strength is not there. And I think Desmond Ritter is the better option for that, though certainly Marcus Mariota did not do anything to warrant losing his job for the immediate future. So I think we're riding with Mariota for a little while, and we'll see what kind of happens from there. Cordell Patterson, good God, my man, 32 years old, you are still rocking. 22 carries, 120 yards, a touchdown. He looked electric. It was amazing to see us get 200-plus yards on the Saints' defense, where historically we've been pretty terrible at running for the last three or four years. So that was a really good return to form. We had over 400 yards of offense, which was a pleasant surprise. Uh, as far as the receivers go, uh, Omide, he did okay. He got missed on a deep ball. Uh, again, going back to Mariota's deep ball accuracy, that should have been a touchdown. Uh, and then you had Drake London, who was targeted seven times. He should have had six receptions. One of them was a really bad drop that he did end up making up for on the same drive. Uh, Carter Hodge was pretty good overall. And just in general, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different receivers on the day. Now, again, only 20 completions. There were 33 pass attempts. 
Uh, but we did find a large number of receivers, or at least target a large number of receivers. Um, so those are things I'm, that we can build on going forward. Our offense, I think, will be the strength this year overall. Now, other things are a problem. Marcus Mario fumbled more or less on the goal line and just co probably cost us the game if you go back and really evaluate things that the Falcons could have done differently to win. Definitely cost us points, and probably we were, we were really rocking on that, uh, on that particular drive, so we probably could have found the end zone uh, not long after that. Um, but, you know, wasn't meant to be. We did hold them to a three and out, so they didn't get points off of it, but it was still not a good thing in general. Um, and then, again, he had two fumbles, lost one. Uh, Zacchaeus had a bad fumble that got knocked out on one of his big catches. Wouldn't have, so, you know, again, he got missed for a deep pass touchdown, and then he has the fumble. So a mixed day overall for him. Guys that looked freaking phenomenal on defense, and let's talk about the defense as a whole. Last year, our major problem was no QB pressure and lacking sacks. I think we had 18 total last year, whereas the next lowest team had 28. Four sacks in a single game against a relatively good team, like you know, a, a team that I would consider a potential playoff team, and we had four sacks against them. That is almost 25% of our entire total last year. So I feel a lot better about that. We did look great when we brought the damn pressure. The second we let our foot off the gas and went to some weak-ass zone in the fourth quarter, when we went conservative, we don't have the personnel for that. You have to keep pressure on him. Evacati got his first sack, the second sack of the game. Looked phenomenal as an edge rusher. Use him. The five-man rush was working a large amount of, the, amount of the time. It's when we dropped down to three- and four-man rushes where we just got absolutely picked apart by Jameis Winston. And speaking of guys that were very good for them, you know, kudos to two guys on that team. Jarvis Landry, no touchdowns, but seven receptions for 114 yards. You know, still proven why he is one of the best receivers in the game. And then you also had Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas only had five catches, but they were all clutch. They were all big plays. They were all pretty much first down plays for him, and two of them were touchdowns. So Michael Thomas, back to form. If you took him in fantasy, you're being rewarded. We did hold Kamara to 39 yards rushing and only seven yards through the air. So if you had him on fantasy and thought he'd do well against the Falcons, you were sorely mistaken. Uh, Taysom Hill, we did not anticipate – his rushing ability. He had a 57-yard rush against us, kind of playing almost like a quarterback. Um, again, he is their gadget guy, and he played very well overall, too. Um, he had uh, the one touchdown rushing. He had a couple of what I would call you know big targets and one reception uh, uh, in the receiving game. But again, overall, we did pretty well. We had him on the ropes 26-10 to 10 with 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And then we freaking went conservative. You cannot do that. The Falcons don't have the personnel or we don't have the coaching. Something is lacking when we make that decision. We got away from the offensive game plan that was working. We tried to tried to work the clock a little bit more, which I don't mind, but we didn't continue the defense. We had them on the ropes again after our fourth sack of the game, second and 19, and they basically pick it up on the next two plays. It was terrible. It was a god-awful Game to watch from that perspective in the fourth quarter. Arthur Smith has to be better. He has to keep the pressure. We're expected to be a bad team. Don't go conservative. Beat the living crap out of them entire game if you can. Put the pressure on them. Just keep up the intensity. We're not expected to be good. Be unexpected. Do something that other coaches wouldn't do to try and win a game. Because obviously that game plan of being up by a couple of scores and expecting that you're going to win in the fourth quarter, just going conservative isn't going to work. And I think that's what our biggest problem was. It's really been our biggest problem the last few years. When we go to conservative mode, it is bad. We have not had a good run at being conservative in quite some time. Now, again, guys that looked good on defense overall. Richie Grant uh, playing out there in you know, safety and kind of linebacker position looked amazing yesterday. I was really, really happy with his development going into his second year. Uh, Rashawn Evans looked pretty good overall. Again, Epicady had a sack. 
Uh, it was really one of his only big plays of the game, but good God, he did amazing with it. So I loved seeing that out of him. Uh, then you had uh, Grady Jarrett, who basically had two sacks. I gave him credit for one and a half. He was the he was the main focal point of that half sack, though, along with Lorenzo Carter. Lorenzo Carter, again, another guy that we added to this team this year. Got a little pressure on him. Um, it just, in general, was a great game. I appreciated what I saw of the Falcons' offense, and I appreciate what I saw of the defense. It gives me hope that we actually can be competitive. I still don't know that we win a lot of games. This was really in the fourth quarter, one of those things where I thought it was a very winnable game and we just didn't pull it out. But anyways, let me know if you've got any thoughts down below. Just a real quick shout out to college. Uh, major upset. Sunbelt had a great, great week overall with App State uh, upsetting number six, Texas A&M. You had, um, on the other end of that, Georgia Southern taking out Nebraska. And I feel like there was one more major. Oh, yeah, Marshall took out Notre Dame, number eight at <laughs> Notre Dame, which is always wonderful to see the Fighting Irish go down. A um, few other major upsets. Uh, Alabama ended up almost losing to Texas. Some of it was Alabama playing poorly and being uh, called for a large number of defensive penalties. But a part of it, I think, you know, Texas didn't look like the better team most of the game. But Texas is probably underrated and probably should be a top 25 team the rest of the way this year. As they are about to come into the SEC, they definitely proved why they deserve to be there. Um, I have been a skeptic of that, thinking that they would be routinely a 6-6 six and six or 8-4 and four team. Gave me a little bit more perspective that, hey, maybe they can be a 9-3-10-2 team on the regular in the SEC if they can hold their own with Alabama that way. Again, they got some help from the refs. They do have some recruiting classes that have helped them out tremendously in the recent years, so I think they're building a winning culture in Texas. Alabama, just an off day. I don't think this is saying a whole lot about the about the Crimson Tide. I think they're still a great team. Uh, deservedly so, losing the number one spot and going to number two to the Georgia Bulldogs, who have been on a roll for the last two games, allowing three points total. Uh, granted, we played Samford, and then we played Oregon, but they were number 11 at the time. Um, so, again, college football, love it, and you know, love to see my dogs on top. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts on college football, this Falcons-Saints game down below. Definitely an interesting one to be at. Hated to lose it that way, but, you know, again, it, it's, it's a good showing for the Falcons. Better than I thought we would do this year. I thought we were going to get blown out. We didn't get blown out. Uh, but anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please like and subscribe this video. And uh, otherwise, until next time, guys, rise up.